All right, I'm a little bit better set up for this one. Here we go. That, <laughs> that's not gonna get old. Wow. That looks freaking sweet. That is definitely the coolest thing I've ever freaking done, guys. That little intersecting half lap miter joint is just gorgeous. We got one more to do. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So no video last week, I apologize about that, but I was extremely sick to the point where I didn't want to do anything, I couldn't do anything, and I just felt horrible. So I didn't make any videos, I didn't make any progress on our white oak door here, but let me show you where we're at now. Here is our white oak door, and here's the layout of our Munton bars here. You can see we have a point of intersection here, one here and then two more at the top, which is basically a mirror image, the exact same thing you see down here. So what needs to happen is this needs to stay a solid piece of wood and these two also need to stay solid. So basically I'm not gonna just cut this and then piece it in here inside this little panel. That's not gonna happen. These are gonna remain solid, they're gonna intersect, they're gonna miter, and they're also gonna be half lap. So we gotta accomplish all three of those tasks in this little Munton bar right here. Now you can see my Munton bars have just a square top right here, just a flat stock. I need to mill the profiles in these before I move on to actually trying to make these joints right here. So that's what we're gonna do first. All right guys, so here's how it looks now with our profiles on there. It looks absolutely amazing. So, and this white oak is just beautiful. You can see that fleck right there. That just looks awesome. So I'm gonna do the math now to figure out where exactly I need to intersect these. So this is kind of a rough layout. I haven't done any measurements or dimensioning to figure out where this needs to go. But what I'll probably do is try to make this little panel down here in the corners just get those square so if I get these you know whatever it is four inches by four inches or whatever then that'll determine where these joints are going to intersect so I'll figure that out and then we'll start this whole intersection process first thing I need to do is to switch out my blade with this quarter inch dado blade right here so I'll get this thing popped in and then I'll be using my fence here to index so I can get these things exactly where they need to be. So I've got this little block right here and this is gonna be my setup block for this. So I can get this registered with my fence here and I can tighten my fence down, make sure that is exactly where I want it so that looks good and then this fence I can slide back just past the blade and then I can lock this down here so now I'll be indexing off this so I'll get my uh, sled here I mean this whole table saw is basically a sled but I'll reference this and then I can cut across right here so the next thing I need to do is figure out exactly how high this blade needs to be and it needs to come just to the top of the profile on that Munton bar. So you can see this piece right here had a pretty substantial tear out. So this is an extra one. I'm gonna be using this to set up the blade height. But that little, little profile right there, my blade needs to come up to that while this is laying down sideways. So what I can do, I can hold this sideways like that and then lower the blade to just barely touch right there, which that looks pretty close right there. So I'll give that a shot. So that right there is exactly what I'm after. That's exactly what I wanna see. 
So I've got that side profile cut out where I'm just leaving that top edge, that little lip there. So I've got my blade height set up exactly where I want it. So now that I've got that dialed in right there, I can go ahead and make these same notch cuts in my actual pieces. All right guys, so I've got my parts laid out here again in my styles and rails, just so you can kind of see where these are gonna go. So you can see those notches in there now, and you can see the kind of uh, layout this is gonna give us. This ended up being a four and five eighth inch square panel right here, or pane for the glass, whatever you wanna call that. So those will intersect right there where those two uh, notches line up. So pretty cool. The next thing I need to do is I need to take all of these little notches and miter the edge of each of them. So that is gonna be accomplished at the miter saw. This is how we're going to accomplish making these cuts. So I'm gonna bevel the saw, we'll bevel it to the right hand side to get started. Now I need to miter that little notch like I was talking about, but if I just lay this right here on the face of the, the table of the saw rather, I can't really get my full cut capacity. I need this molding to come out here and be lined up right with my arbor because that's where I'm gonna get that full cut capacity. So I'm actually going to use this off cut to help me accomplish that. So this is gonna push it out more than enough and this is gonna do two things. It's going to do exactly that, what I just said, get me lined up dead center with the blade. And then also, I can rest my Munton bar using my little glass cutout recess there to just kinda of lock in and stop and hold it there. So once that's in position, I can then make my 45 degree cuts on my Munton bars here. Now, this is the most tricky most difficult painstaking part of this whole process because if I mess this up I gotta start over so I'm gonna creep up on these cuts ever so slightly and I also have to set the depth of my blade to stop before it goes all the way through this Munton bar so I'm gonna get that dialed in right now and then this is my sample scrap piece I'm gonna see if I can get that depth set in and then we're, we're gonna go for it All right guys, so I finished my right hand bevel, so I'm gonna bevel the saw the opposite way. So now that I have all of my miters cut in my Munson bars, I need to go ahead and do the half lap part of this joint. So what I've decided on is I'm going to take half the material height out of the top of these horizontal bars and half the material out of the bottom of the vertical bars. You'll see how this makes sense here in a second. But I have my original setup with my fence reference right here. and. It's a good thing I didn't move this because I'm going to use that same exact setup to accomplish taking out this material. So I need to raise that blade height to exactly half of the height of one of these bars here. And these are inch and three quarters, so I'm gonna raise that blade up to seven eighths. And I've got my little setup blocks right here, which makes it real easy to do this. So I'll go ahead and knock that out real quick. So for seven eighths, I can pull out a three quarter block and an eighth inch block, stack those up, 
and that gives me that 7 8. So now that I've got that blade height set up, I can just run these through upright like this. So they aren't going to be laying sideways like they were the first time because that would just chop them in half and <laughs> be really bad. So I'll run them upright face down on my horizontals and then on my verticals I'll run them face up. So yeah, we're going to knock this out. Okay. I'm nervous. I don't want to, it's, it all falls on this right here. Well, everything that I've done kind of, we're about to see how good or bad it, it comes out. But I'm going to share the result with you guys because this joint isn't super tight. I'm okay with that because this is difficult. This is really, really next level stuff right here for me at least. So yeah, let's make these cuts. So you can see that I've got the top of the bottom one notched out and the bottom of the top one notched out. So in theory, these should go together and it looks like they're just a little too tight. So I am going to get my new chisels out and work on these a little bit, but you can see that looks like that might actually work, which means, oh man, it's starting to go. That looks really cool. All right, I'm kind of scared to like pound this thing in. Uh, we'll see. I kind of just want to tap it in. Oh, it's actually going. Wow. I think I'm going to give it a little tap. <laughs> oh, it's actually going. And it actually looks decent. I definitely could improve upon this in the future. But first try, I'm not complaining. That's pretty sweet. I'm having like tear out. I don't know what it is with that um, dado blade, that quarter inch, but it's, it just really gave me some tear out. Tap that a little bit more. So it needs to go down a little bit more. It's not going. I was afraid of that. <laughs> but hopefully I can get it back out without snapping it. That's going to be tricky. But overall, I mean, if they end up looking like this, I'm freaking happy. Like that. I mean, it could get better, but man, I am not complaining about that one bit. Yes. It's coming out. All right, I can solve this problem easy. Okay, so I need to take out just a hair more material out of this to get it to sit down more flush into here. All right, we get to try this again. Pretty decent. Oh yeah. Yes sir, that one will work. Wow. All right, we'll give the next one a shot here.
Not too bad. Dang. Look at that. That's so freaking cool. This one kind of popped out. So they're not extremely tight, but they're definitely tight enough. Wow. So they'll lock and hold together without slipping out. That is just too cool. All right, I'm gonna spin it around and do the other side. All right, I'm a little bit better set up for this one. Here we go. That, <laughs> that's not gonna get old. Wow. That looks freaking sweet. That is definitely the coolest thing I've ever freaking done, guys. That little intersecting half lap miter joint is just gorgeous. We got one more to do. So I'm gonna take this assembly now that's super tight fit together and drop it in our door over here. Check this out. We have our Munton bar assembly all in place, all is one. And look at those joints right there. That is just too cool. I do have some tear out in some of these spots and some burn marks even from my table saw blade. But I'm thinking I can clean all that up when I do the final sanding before I put the finish on. But look at that, we got our square little panel here in the corners. That's just too cool. This really worked out a lot better than I anticipated. And I'm really happy with the joints on these. And look at that, that is just, that is not bad. For first try, I really, really impressed myself with this. So this has gotta be up there with like top three things that I've ever done that I'm really, really kind of like, wow, I actually did that. So check it out. Got these over here, just looking super good. And you may wonder like, how are we going to, you know, get this thing in place when it comes time to assemble this? Well, this clamp right here is just dry fitting this together. I haven't glued this up yet. I'm actually gonna be putting some dominoes right here. So I'll have two dominoes down here on the bottom rail and I'll have one up there on that smaller top rail. So I'll take this back apart, cut out for my dominoes, make those holes, and then I'll drop this back in and then I'll kind of sandwich it together. And the way I'm going to attach this to my styles and rails is going to be with screws. So when I drop this in, I'll be able to mark off right here exactly where I want to, you know, line this up and drill a hole for. And then I can just, you know, bring that over with the square and drill it all the way through. So I'll have a hole here, but I'll just cut some white oak plugs and then just uh, fill those in with wood plugs. And I did order a drill press to accomplish this task and to do other things in the future. I've needed a drill press for a while now. I finally pulled the trigger on one. I went ahead and got the Nova Voyager. It's like a really high tech direct drive drill press. I highly recommend looking into them. They're really nice. I'm not sponsored by them at all, but I put a lot of thought into what drill press I wanted to get. And that one seems to fit and check all the boxes. So I'll be getting that. I didn't want to, you know, drill a hole free handed. So I don't want to have like some wobbly hole and mess this big investment up into this door. So I'm going to wait till that gets here. Should be here in like a week or two. So I'm going to just kind of put this on hold until then. But other than that, guys, I'm moving right along with this process and I'll get this thing assembled. And traditionally, I want to throw this out there. You wouldn't screw the Munton bars in. I'm just doing that because I didn't want to add throwing tenons and mortises into these mutton bars when I already had this complex joint that I'm shocked that even worked out. But as I do this more and more, I'm noticing, hey, I'm actually kind of getting good at some of this stuff. So it's pretty cool to see like the skill level just keep building and growing. So yeah, that's, that's all I got for you today, guys. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about this and I'll pick up with you next time. Probably, definitely not here, because I'm gonna put this on hold, but we're gonna go back to that 
uh, historic house. Knock out a few more things. John's actually over there. He's been there for like two weeks straight. Uh, I've been sick for that whole week, but um, yeah, he's been knocking some stuff out over there, and we've got a lot of interesting jobs coming up with Brent and his team, and some other cool stuff in the works, so stay tuned. I don't want to spoil anything, but there's going to be some really cool stuff coming up between Brent and I and what we've decided to do moving forward, but anyways, pretty cool stuff. Let me know if you have any questions. I will catch you guys on the next video.